Hello and welcome to my video tutorial for Zazzle.com's custom fabric that they are now offering in various uh, fiber types, combed cotton, polyester poplin, which is what this is. It comes surged at around the edges and this is the leftover piece that I had of uh, art that I printed on this specific uh, fabric. I ordered a uh, fat quarter which is 28 inches by 18 inches I believe it was and um, wait, that's comb cotton but comb cotton polyester poplin uh, they're great uh, the color is brilliant it washes brilliantly no ink comes off no ink comes off of my finger when I'm working with it it's pigment based ink and this tutorial is to show you how you can make a washable sewn fabric photo frame, as you can see, front and back and strut leg, that's what this is called. It's all washable and you will learn how to do it with the next 20 or so minutes roughly of my video that I took. Uh, the, um, let's see, they offer different types of fabrics. Both comb cotton and polyester poplin, they're great. Uh, there's also linen and a couple other cottons and polyesters. Uh, you could even, as an artist or a designer or a crafter, cut and sew, which is what this is. It's called a cut and sew that has all the patterns laid out for all the parts. And you can see. And uh, it has as well, you could put the text instructions. I would recommend. Oops, I would recommend a font that's 18 or above uh, in size and then you could always put the rest of the instructions on the description part of that fabrics link that you're offering if you're an artist. So it's great for crafters, it's great for people who want to make pillows, it's great for giving as a gift, it's good if you're a designer, a sewing pattern designer, fabric lovers, you name it, it has so many possibilities. But this specific frame, I had all, uh, I believe it was 10 panels on the fat quarter of this specific fabric. And uh, so it also had instructions on it as well. And extra supplies, extra uh, the tools that are needed, which are very minimal. You can buy them at any craft art supply or a fabric store that offers them. If you go to the main stores, uh, Joann's, Michael's, etc., use their store coupon so you can save money. And one of the big things that makes this frame work is I use Thermoweb Heat and Bond. It is sold in a roll, or you could buy it by the yard, or buy it at the cutting table at Joann's. Uh, you shouldn't have to use more than a yard on a fat quarter, um, really. <laughs> and um, as you can see, it's shiny. I don't know if you can see, that's kind of shiny. And it's a paperbacked iron-on fabric glue fusible web. And that is what I use mainly for uh, the patterns backing my fabric uh, photo frames and my brooches, which you will see in a minute how to do that as well. I have on this back quarter the frame, the brooch, and this extra little do what you want to do with it pattern that filled up space. <laughs> and it has all the parts, this washable fabric photo frame, it's all sewn up, it's really easy to do. Um, it has the strut leg pocket, it has the removable mat board or cardboard. You could use cardboard, and you could use uh, you could use you could use scissors, or you could use um, it's called a utility knife. That's what they use to cut carpet. And the back slides out as well. Mat board doesn't matter what color you use. You could use white cream, just as long as the one that faces out towards the fabric. This, by the way, is thick fabric. This polyester poplin. Just as long as it doesn't show through, you're fine. And this is a fairly bright pattern that I made. It's called curvy plaid. 
the artwork is very feminine, abstract, folk artsy, lots of curves and curls and wiggles and and spirals and dots and things within a plaid layout as you can see and the photo comes out as well so you cut your photo you know the size of the photo you cut the sleeve to the size of the photo and what you see it's a sheet protector you see the fold right here that's the side of the sheet protector turned to its side and you cut this two layered pocket little little sheet uh, protector sleeve you cut that to the size of the photo and then that is your protective element you want to use acid free as well and um, as you can see the inside edges I used well for what it's worth I used a hot glue gun as you can see uh, with the nozzle and I used that to finish the inside edges and the outside edges uh, to clean up the corners in case you have any fraying bits. I used a ribbon to connect uh, the bottom right corner of the easel back with the leg, the strut leg. I have buttonholes. You can make these with your sewing machine. If you have a zigzag, which I will, the zigzag function, which I will show you in the video, it's super, super simple. You can almost make your own embroidery with it, really, if you practiced enough. And of course, back the fabric with some fusible web. Um, but yeah, so it, this is so multifunctioning. And um, if you really wanted to, too, you could paint the back with acrylic paint if you wanted to. If you really, really wanted to go that route. And you could scotch guard them and you could do all kinds of things. And so we are going to, um, oh, let me explain too. Um, in case you didn't want to use the zigzag stitch, you could use a hole puncher. And you would use that as well for the, um, the brooch pin, the back. If, you, if it's too thick for this to go through, and if you do use a hole puncher, use a quality craft store one, not those dollar cheapy ones. Buy yourself a pair of these skinny scissors, these little pointy scissors. I call them embroidery scissors. This is by Ginger. I got it from Michaels for about $5.40. Well worth it. Highly recommend it. They've stayed sharp for a very, very long time. Straight pins. These will hold your panels in place when you're trying to sew them so you have nice, crisp, 90 degree corners and straight edges. Straight pins. Um. Ruler, pen, of course, pencil, um, hot glue, low temp glue gun, fabric scissors, very important. Um, and then, oh yes, and ribbon, yes. Um, the wider this is, the wider this is on the bottom, uh, the wider you want the ribbon. So if you had a small frame, you'd use a smaller ribbon. This is 70 inch. No more than 9 inches should do, so don't. Don't spend too much on the ribbon, no, unless you really want it to. But, and then if you go, when you wash these, all you have to do when you wash the frame and the brooch, you're taking out all the parts. You're taking out the photo and the sleeve, and this is a sheet protector. Make sure you buy the one that says acid-free. So, the more acid-free, the better. This is a polyester. It's not. It's a synthetic. But uh, the pigments are the pigment-based ink is acid-free. The thermal web ultra hold heat and bond is acid-free. Uh, the sheet protector is acid-free. So that and the mat board is acid-free. So it's almost all acid-free. And on to the beginning of making the fabric photo frame. Thank you. Okay, so here is the Dazzle fabric, uh, the custom finished fabric that's being offered at Dazzle.com. You can visit my profile page on Dazzle at uh, Dazzle.com slash fabricated frame slash fabric. In this specific fabric, we're going to wash the sizing out of uh, the print. The fat quarter with the curvy flag design to make a washable thin fabric photo frame. In here, I use cold water and a mild detergent. Uh, we'll wash the picture. And we're going to 
take this out and then we'll throw it in the dryer on low and go from there. So this is the pigment based uh, printed fabric by Zazzle.com. Uh, uh, this is the curvy plaid uh, frame uh, cut and sew that you can make. Here it is uh, wet, uh, you know, finished and washed. No, uh, no uh, ink has been, uh, has, has come out. Uh, so it stayed true. Uh, no fading. Uh, so this is uh, ready to put in the dryer on low temp, on a low temperature. Uh, the color, everything stays great. No, no ink, no running ink, no running in image, no leaking, no, just very good. Very, very good. And, uh, okay, on to the dryer. Okay, so we have the fabric for the Kirby Plaid uh, artwork, as you can see. We have it facing down, or it's a printed side facing down, and as you can see with this polyester poplin, you can see right through it. And in fact, if you look really close, this is the line that I use right here for uh, the for joining the inside frame front border to the frame middle panels that are over here, and uh, you can follow that line. Um, when uh, when the fusible web, which is here, as you can see, it's it's shiny blue side is going to be ironed onto the back of this, and I cut it off of the roll. So what I want to do is I'm going to line it up. I'm going to line up the fabric here as close as I can. There we go. And I'm going to iron on it. This is a heat and bond ultra hold. You could use the heat and bond light. Uh, this is a thicker <coughs> glue, uh, iron-on glue adhesive for fabric, but it is acid-free, so uh, that's a plus, especially for photo frames. And this is pigment-based, but it is polyester, so it's synthetic, so it's kind of trying to be as acid-free as possible. So I'm going to iron this down. What you do is you iron it for a second all over, and then you peel the paper backing off. So I ironed it. Technically, they want you to do this, but sometimes it rolls on you, so sometimes you have to slide. But I'm ironing it. It takes about a second or so. This is for the brooch uh, pattern, the four panel brooch pattern. And then over here, I had to piece the strips of thermal web for the strut leg panel to make the strut leg pocket. There's four two for one side, two for another. And then as a rest, we did, we did this to the rest. So you don't need the whole, like a whole lot. You just cover the parts that, you know, the back of the panels that are needed. I'm going to uh, cut out the frame front center area to pull the inside flaps under and uh, fold it down and turn down. So I fold the piece over, the thermal webs on, as you can see it's shiny, it's ironed on, and I cut a little slit on the inside, on the dark uh, reddish brown part, and now I'm going to cut out the center. Just to let you know, as I'm pressing these seam allowances under and down, no ink has come off on my fingers. So that's a good thing with the pigment based ink. And now let me finish doing the frame front. I had cut out the center, I cut up to this gold corner on all four corners, and now I'm folding them under and pressing them down using my fingernail shaft as a burnishing tool, if you will. And same thing for the outside, I'm doing the same thing. But when I cut the corners at 45 degrees all around the floor outside and then into the corner at 45 degrees as well with these lovely embroidery scissors. So here is the second 
inside frame from border I'm cutting out the center I've cut out the outside corners at 45 degree angles this inside uh, piece you see this white piece is your pattern for your board that goes inside of your strut leg pocket you transfer those lines onto math board or cardboard so let me cut out the center and fold back the inside and the outside edges to see balances and finish the second inside frame front border. Okay, I'm going to go around on the outside and for this case the inside of the frame front borders and the rest of the panels that you see over here. I'm gonna go around the outside and two the two frame fronts the inside. One sixteenth of an inch along the edge. A little closer for this particular one, but then this one we're going to go along this gold, where the gold and the pink meet. And um, to, for this is for all the panels, including the strut leg panels for the strut leg pocket. And then we'll join them. But first we have to sew down the edges. As you can see, I made a stitch line on the outside right here. This is for your line to follow, and I went up here. I remeasured everything, and I can see that the photo is going to come down to about where the pink meets the brownish red color here, this dark brownish red. So I figure, okay, that's a quarter inch from here, so that's why this stitch line is here, and then all the way up. So then when you flip it over, because the the frame front is going to go over on top of this side of the inside frame front it's going to match up you're going to sew the inside lines to the insides together and you're going to leave it open on three sides so when you attach uh, you'll sew this top part but you're going to leave these three open because you're going to connect this inside frame front to the frame middle the two that make the frame middle pocket and that the space between the frame middle and the attached uh, connected two frame fronts makes the pocket for the photo and its protective clear sleeve and that's why you have this so you have this line to go by as a guide your stitch line when you're turning it over and that's why i put that line on the other side for you to follow <laughs> So I took the two panels for the frame middle panel, that's a uh, panel that the connected two layered frame front is going to be connected to. And this will be connected, you follow the line, the stitch line, and connect this inside frame front to this finished frame middle panel, which is two layers with fusible web on both. Uh, print sides facing out sewn together. Normally I would have you, with, if you had the pattern, I'd have you um, leave an opening at the top to put your hand in. You'd have two layers of fabric. You'd go around the thermal web pattern with the glue on it. You'd just have one thermal web panel glued and then you'd turn it inside out. You'd snip your corners, turn it inside out, and then you'd iron it and just finish your opening and you'd have a frame middle panel, but because of the nature that I had to print out all these um, designs or have them printed on the fat quarter, that's why we're doing it this way. So I took the two panels, snipped the corners all around to 45 degree angles, folded under the seam allowances and um, sewed around them and then joined those two uh, frame middle panels together to make the finished frame middle panel. Okay, so now I'm going to sew on the inside front, the inside frame front to the finished frame middle panel, and I'll do that following, following the thread track, if you will, and do it on all three sides, following that thread line, and that will make the pocket for the photo. Let me do that now. So I'm going to sew. Uh, the inside second frame front uh, to the finished frame middle and also I just want to let you know if you follow the line on the outside that you stitched to make this as your guide this thread line 
do it so that you also back stitch and leave enough space to to basically turn turn this under. I'm sorry, turn this under. So you'll, after you're done sewing the three sides down here, as you can see where I'm pinned, you're going to sew this top area together along the edge. So that way that's finished the top edge, and then you can go back around and, and sew the outer parts. But you gotta get this down first, and and then and. and and this top edge, these two frame front borders uh, sewn together before you do the outside edges of anything, because you need to make that you need to make that finished opening for the photo in its pocket. Oh, and again, um, two. You want to back stitch here. You want to back stitch down here and down here, then over here. Back stitch, back stitch, and then back stitch at this end. And then that should secure it very well. Okay, so here I joined the two panels for the front strut leg pocket panel and the back strut leg panel finished. So this will be sewn one to here. So there's two layers of fabric, two layers of fusible web. And same thing for here. Two layers of fabric, two layers of fusible web. Side snipped, folded, seam allowance is folded under, sewn around, all the way around for all four panels. These two are joined and these two are joined. Now you're going to join this on top of this, but you're going to leave an opening here. So you're just going to go around this way. You leave that opening for the board that you're going to cut, okay? And then this part will be sewn to about here when you line it up. So it'll bend out and you know, we're going to leave an opening for the ribbon. And we're going to um, leave a little opening for the ribbon here when they connect we'll have a little spot um, I'll show you that in a little while but um, we're gonna go so 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 stop so 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 right here leave an opening for the ribbon and actually I think I'm gonna cut the ribbon right now I'm gonna cut nine inch a nine inch length of ribbon bear with me and I'll pin it in place and you'll see next I'm going to sew this edge here down and this edge across here to the back strut leg panel and then put the front strut leg panel on top of that and sew. You could put this, you could have put this between the two layers before you did it, but I forgot. But that's still okay because it'll be hidden and that's okay. Okay, now this, uh, the two, um, strut leg panels, the two finished front and back, four layers of fabric, four layers of fusible web pocket here for the board to go through. Ribbon connected, tucked inside, and sewn in place. So now we're going to attach it to the easel back pattern. As you can see, the pattern was printed for the back so that it could be, you know, coordinating. Why should you have a, a frame where the back doesn't have any decoration as well. That's why I did it. So we're going to attach the leg up here at the top. We're going to line up our designs the best we can and we're going to sew it up top here across twice. You, of course back stitching at the end so that way it's nice and secure. Look, if you need pins, use straight pins to line everything. You'll be fine. Okay. So I cut out the hole for the buttonhole to hang the frame. And basically what I did was I poked my, my pointy end of the scissors through and cut around the outside of the dark brown area. It's about one inch wide and it's about mm, half inch, quarter to half inch from the edge centered for both this side, for the left side, and the top side. So we just do this. Do this, we poke our, our edge through, watch your finger, make sure it's not in, it doesn't go so that okay, ah, uh, here we go. And now we go and we go around like so. And there you go. There you go. Okay, we're gonna go around the edge and we're gonna seal the edge uh, with a straight stitch and then go back around and use a zigzag stitch catching the inside edge here and use a 3-5 width depending. Um, 
and then what you just basically do is you would just you do the straight stitch go around the edge and then change your setting to zigzag you change your length to between one and zero and then i'd probably use a one because this is this fabric stick and then change it to three to five for the width um that's how wide it would be going around but the length is how close the zig angle is so the lower the number the closer the stitch but this means how wide the stitch would be so that's how you get that okay i had joined the leg to the back here with the ribbon tucked on on this side in between these layers i had done the zigzag hole for the buttonholes as you can see and here we're about ready to tuck the ribbon in figure out how much we're going to stop to allow for the frame to stand up nicely which as you can see it is the three sides are, are sewn the three sides are sewn except for a little opening here to tuck the ribbon in and we can use some hot glue to finish that um, or you could sew it, um, your choice. This is very thick fabric. This is polyester poplin, and I barely got it through my Kenmore sewing machine. However, if we use the thinner, uh, cottons and such, or linens, it will probably go through. So I'm going to finish this one. Put a pin where I want to oh. have it stop, and I'll tuck it in, and I'll cut the little excess off here, tuck it in, hot glue, so etc and then you're finished just make sure that it's standing where it stands you're ready to just cut about here put a pin here and here so you know where you're going to where to stop the tucking when you tuck it in to the little pocket which is between these layers so now i can what you could do after you're finished making the the physical frame itself sewing it all together what you could do is take as you can see the barely the tip of the nozzle when it's heated up and barely take some glue in this corner barely 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 and then what you can do is you pull it towards the back you just push it in the back under over and under so to thing and then that will seal your corners you don't get that with a uh, those uh, manufacturer frames that are out there, they'll just snip these inside corners and nothing, you know, they're, they're just, you can't wash them. So, as you can see, yeah, nice and clean, nice 90 degree angles, that's the most important thing. Even if you use Elmer's glue and water, you could dab it with a cheap paintbrush and, you know, put some uh, uh, saran wrap or something, on plastic wrap underneath. So that way it doesn't go underneath and then you could paint it and use your finger and get it back there and do that for all the four corners i just have to finish this one and then the outer corners make sure that you don't have any fraying um that way when they're washed they won't start unraveling with the thermal web that that helps keep everything in place but i just use that as an extra uh, secure measure on top of doing what I do so that you know they stay they last a long time that's the important thing hi I just want to thank you for watching my nearly 30 minute after this is all done 30 minutes of uh, the video tutorial 20 minutes of it the last 20 minutes is the tutorial itself and I want to thank Zazzle for the opportunity to uh, do this video tutorial for you. There is a blog post posting the text and photo step-by-step -step instructions uh, posted at Fabricated Frames, that's F-A-B-R-I-C-A-T-E-D F-R-A-M-E-S dot blog spot dot com fabricatedframes.blogspot.com it's also on wordpress as well uh as well we're uh, going to have something on zazzle.com and i hope you enjoy this my name is christy hubler i am the inventor of the washable fabric photo frame 
and the washable sewn fashion brooch pin and the parts are removable this is a great opportunity and I hope you if you're an artist out there and a designer you want to come up with something another way to do fabric work with fabric go for it I say and uh, use Photoshop to uh, put out your pattern you know lay out your patterns or illustrator or Photoshop elements even and uh, again, thank you very, very much. I am fabricatedframes.com. I am also on craftsy.com with my sewing pattern downloads at craftsy, that's C-R-A-F-T-S-Y dot com slash user slash 2496069 slash pattern dash store. Look up Christy Hubler. My name is Christy Hubler. Thank you very, very much for this opportunity. Thank you for watching my video, and good luck with your fabric sewing projects. Thank you.